Well, it is June the 1st, 2023, and you know what that means, that if you are in America, then you know that June 1st, every year, marks what is known as Pride Month. We're going to be talking about a lot of things that have to do with pride, with gender, with LGBTQIA, with some LGBTQIA friendly groups being invited and uninvited and invited to certain events. And we're going to talk about all of these things and how we as believers should respond in light of these things. Stay tuned. The Dr. Matters podcast starts right now. Welcome to the Doctrine Matters Podcast, a tool to help believers rediscover true biblical doctrine and to help them understand and live out their faith in their homes, in their churches, and in their communities. Thank you for listening to this episode. Let's get right to it. Belly Deo Gloria. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Doctrine Matters Podcast. And if you listen to the intro, you know that we are going to be talking about Pride Month, and we're going to be talking about a few things that have happened leading up to Pride Month. And as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about the Los Angeles Dodgers, a Major League Baseball team, inviting a group, getting pushed back, uninviting the group, and then inviting them back again for their Pride Night on June 16th. We'll talk about that more here in just a few minutes. But if you know anything about Pride Month, you know that this is the month where most organizations, companies, and sports teams will turn all of their logos into rainbow colors in support of the LGBTQIA plus people, those people who feel marginalized, those people who feel like they are the minority in this country. They will give them a platform during this month. And if you have been keeping up with all things in our culture, you know that really these companies and organizations and commercials and all of these things haven't been uh, silent when it comes to the LGBTQIA plus agenda. They've given them a platform for far longer than just one month out of every year. This is something that our culture is starting to promote more and more and more, but also we're beginning to see a big pushback from people in our culture today. Will it make a difference? I don't know. But simply pushing back is not going to be enough. I believe that we must push back from a biblical perspective and Christian men and women should stand up and do whatever is necessary to see that this kind of stuff stops. And I know people that are watching or may get a hold of this that may say, well, I'm not a Christian. Well, that's the problem. You need Christ because you are Romans 1. Romans 1 again. We talk about Romans 1, suppressing the truth that there is a God. You know there's a God, but you reject that. You suppress it, and you live in unrighteousness. That is essentially what we see people doing in our culture today, especially those that are associated with the LGBTQIA plus movement. Even people within that group would claim to be Christians. If you listen to my last episode, I was watching the Secrets of Hillsong docuseries, and there was a homosexual man that was involved in Hillsong, New York City. He would claim to be a Christian. There were multiple homosexuals that were in this church. But let me just tell you, if you're a true Christian, you cannot be a homosexual and be truly converted to Christ, because that is a sin. And many people will say, well, the word homosexual wasn't in the original language. It was something that was added in the 40s or whatever. Uh, but you can look at the totality of Scripture. Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed simply because of somebody just in sin, right? So uh, homosexuality is a sin. It is against God's standard. It is an abomination. So with that in mind, let's talk about a few things that have happened. First and foremost, we remember one of the most recent things that have happened is Bud Light's sponsorship of Dylan Mulvaney, who is the transgendered influencer that is found on TikTok, YouTube, probably Facebook, all of those platforms. And because Bud Light sponsored Dylan Mulvaney, Bud Light sales began to drop, and it came out from the CEO 
that they weren't really worried about American sales because Bud Anheuser Busch is a worldwide thing. So, although the, the Bud Light stock dropped and sales dropped tremendously, there was uh, a, a note from the CEO says we're not worried. He didn't hear neither this neither here nor there what he thinks, but what is true is companies start to endorse and promote and lean heavily on the LGBTQIA plus agenda, thinking that it will gain them sales, thinking that it will gain them uh, a, a positive reputation. And even political people, political representatives will even shift that way to, to sway voters if they think that way. But we've seen it with Bud Light. And then one of the most recent, recent things is the whole debacle with Target. Many of you likely have seen the shirt come out from Target that they put out there, and it said, Satan respects pronouns. There was a big pushback on that. I think they have pulled that from their website, so you can't purchase that shirt anymore through Target. I'm not completely sure about that, but I think that's right. Uh, there was a lot of pushback on that. But let me just say something about Satan respecting pronouns really quickly. I would say, absolutely, Satan respects pronouns. That is one of those... Uh, that is one of those sayings that I could get behind and say, absolutely, 100%. Now, would I wear the shirt? Would I buy the shirt? No. But here's the thing. God is not a God of confusion or chaos. When we look at the whole gender thing and the pronouns thing, we see that they, they have dreamed up, and I say they, like liberals and people that uh, just are out there. They are not within a biblical framework, and I hate even using the word they, but those that think this way, they want us to believe that gender is a social construct and it can be, uh, the truth can be developed between the ears. So basically whatever you think is true is true. It is very in step with our postmodern culture that would say, whatever you think is truth is truth. And nobody can tell you that your truth is not your truth because we're going to ignore absolute truth that comes from the scripture. And we are going to make our own truth. It is in lockstep with the postmodern culture that we live in. So we see this confusion when it comes to gender and pronouns and all of these things and the, the, he, her, they, them, uh, the, he, fur baby and the, 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 she, whatever, uh, a few episodes ago, I did a, a podcast episode about genders, and I had lists, front and back pages, full of lists of uh, so many genders that there are today. And I'm using genders in air quotes because this is basically what anybody can come up with, can be a new gender. And as a matter of fact, I have this uh, right above me here on the wall, above my screen, I have, um, it's a piece of decor but it is uh, a, a globe, but it's not obviously a globe, it's flat. So basically what this culture tells us that, let me just pick a place, Brazil. If I wanted to be a Brasilio and say that that's where, the way I affirm that's my gender, then the left and those that uh, agree with this gender nonsense would say, you can be a brasilio yo right? That's if that's what you identify as, then that is your new gender. Add it to the list. And anybody that wants to be a Brazilian yo-yo can be a Brazilian yo-yo. And that's the way that the thinking is. I mean, there's no there's no out of bounds. There's nothing that is too far outside of the scope of what a gender can be and what it can't be for somebody to essentially say, no, that's not a true gender because it's all in the mind. You can make it be whatever you want it to be. You can make the truth be true if you want it to be. And everyone else is supposed to fall in line with what you think is truth. The truth is I'm not a Brazilian yo-yo. And you aren't either, and nobody else will ever be. So you see how this is kind of confusing, and it's chaotic, and it's just out there that, that people can identify as cats. They can be they, them, fur babies, and, and, and all of these things. So to say that Satan respects pronouns is to say an actual truth, because all of this pronoun nonsense comes from the enemy, who is Satan. So if Satan has... Um, began, be, he started this whole thing. If he is the originator of this whole uh, gender stuff, then absolutely he's going to respect what he has created. And when I say he created it, you have to look at the people that create this stuff and, and think this stuff up in their minds. They're either in one of two places. They're either giving themselves to the world and Satan is their father those would be unbelievers, 
or you have believers who are giving themselves to Christ and the things of God. So naturally, anyone that is not given to Christ is be, will be given to the world and do worldly things because their father is Satan, and those things will originate from a worldly perspective with Satan as the father. So those things that are that are that originate there in the worldly sense or in the flesh are going to be respected by Satan because he is the author of it. So we find this saying, Satan respects pronouns, to be absolutely true for people that are promoting falsehood with multiple genders. Let me just say this. If you haven't watched that episode on genders, there are two genders, male and female, and you're assigned that at birth. You don't get to make it up in your head. You don't get to choose your baby's gender. God has determined that gender from before the time you were born. So that is the latest thing regarding Target and the shirt that came out saying, you know, Satan uh, respects pronouns. Target then gets a backlash. And I mean, their stocks fell to the lowest it's been in three years as of today, earlier this morning. And that is all a result of people saying, you know, I've had it. Enough's enough. I'm not going to purchase this stuff anymore. I'm not going to buy from Target anymore. I'm not going to do this because you are selling and promoting things that go against what I believe. Now, you may have seen the Bud Light thing. You may have seen the Target thing. So I would also say this. Let me say this before I move on to the, the third thing, which is to me the most disgusting, the most awful thing that I can even think of. But uh, there has been some backlash from people that shopped at Target that have gone into Targets and been abusive to the employees that work there. That is not a proper response. There, I've seen videos of people going in and tearing down the pride um, uh, displays in there and tearing them up and, and just causing a scene. And I don't think that's an appropriate response either. An appropriate response, if you don't want to be affiliated with something a company does, then just don't purchase anything from that company. You can boycott them if you want to. You can write letters. You can you can do all sorts of things, but don't go be bullies to people that had nothing to do with the decision to put those things in there in the first place. Don't go tear up other people's stuff. That's not a way to respond to that. Am I condoning what they've done, what Target has done? Absolutely not. I think it's foolish. I think it's foolish for any company or sports team to include a political agenda in anything that they do. But that doesn't give us a right, whether you're a Christian or just even if you're not a Christian and consider yourself to be a conservative, that is not the way that you should approach these things by destroying property, by talking down to people, by bullying people, by being mean to people. Either way, Target has taken a hit, just like Bud Light took a hit. Target has pulled this merchandise from their website, and uh, uh, their stocks are at a low right now, and um, that's that. Now, the third thing that I want to talk to you about is something that the L.A. Dodgers, the sports team, they have invited a group called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Now, these are men who are dressed in drag who say that they're nuns and they they do a lot of work, charity work for the LGBTQ agenda. Now, if you don't know who the L.A. Dodgers are, they are a baseball team, which baseball is considered to be America's pastime. A lot of hardworking individuals, a lot of people that love the sport, that love the game. They they show up to the games. They watch the games on television. But now the sports arena is taking in politics and promoting this stuff from its fields, from its stadiums, and all things like this. So if you're not familiar with who these men are, I want to show you just a clip, and I don't want to – I really don't want to show a whole lot of it because it is absolutely disgusting. So let me just uh, let me just say this: fair warning. This is not family friendly. 
Um, if you have kids in the room, just you may want to just watch the next 30 seconds without them before you let them watch. I know that there are kids that watch and listen to uh, the Doctrine Matters podcast, so I, I'm just telling you now that this is satanic. This is not natural. This is unnatural. This is suppressing truth and trampling over the scriptures. And this is the group of people the Los Angeles Dodgers have invited to their pride night on June the 16th of this month. Um, let's just watch this. And again, if you're, if you're on audio, um, I, I apologize. You can't watch it and that's probably a good thing. So, uh, j I'm not going to watch this thing's like three minutes and 30 seconds long. I am not going to, uh, play this whole thing, but watch this. So for our listeners on audio, we're watching a, um, this group, it, it, this was an Easter program that they have done somewhere. I don't know where it is, but they have a man in a loincloth and he's, he's up against, he's hanging on a cross. Essentially he's not hanging there, but he's on a cross. And then you have another man wearing a bra, short shorts and high heels doing a stripper dance around the man on the cross. And again, vulgar. I just want you to see it briefly. All right, that's enough of that. Um, I don't even... That is who the L.A. Dodgers are allowing to come perform. I don't know what they're going to do at Pride Night, but I also wanted to show you this little um, interview, newscast interview, and, and just kind of give you some, some background on what's happening. Here, watch this. Controversial day in, day out, and the controversy continues as now we have the Dodgers backstepping, trying to ease a lot of that controversy surrounding the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. First, they, they pull back their invitation and the controversy. Now they offer that invitation again, along with a very special apology. Watch. <laughs> The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence getting more support than they ever imagined. The L.A. Dodgers now backstepping, not only out with an apology, but also re-inviting the Sisters to the team's annual Pride Night at the stadium next month. The Sisters welcoming it as a genuine apology. One of the things we wanted to communicate to them was that a simple apology and re-invitation would simply not be enough. We, as well as the rest of our community, we want to ensure that this is genuine and that they are taking the right steps to reconfirm their allyship with us. That after the Dodgers offer to re-invite the sisters back to the Pride Night event, something they've attended in past years, saying, quote, the Los Angeles Dodgers would like to offer our sincerest apologies to the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, members of the LGBTQ community and their friends and families. We have asked the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence to take their place on the field at our 10th annual LGBTQ Pride Night on June 16th. We are pleased to share that they have agreed. We understand that uh, the Dodgers are sticking their neck out a little bit in associating with us. And we're extremely gratified that our own community spoke to them and said, yes, they look funny, but they do good work. Learn more about them. The sisters known for their charitable work through the LGBTQ community, but it is their style of dress appearing in drag, describing themselves as, quote, queer and trans nuns that ignites the controversy leading the Dodgers to first uninvite the sisters last week after the fallout from the sharp criticism by some Catholic organizations claiming the sisters are a mockery, a claim the sisters flatly reject. We invite those who still have this concern that we might be mocking the sacredness of their very profoundly intimate spiritual experience to get in touch with us and to talk to us and find out what they think. You can weigh our work 
with your skepticism and make your choice. The L.A. LGB. Let me stop right here just for a second. Weigh our work. That is the thing. People think that they can just work their way into a right relationship with God. And, and, and this is every religion other than Christianity has a works based mentality with it that you have to do, do, do in order to get in, in order to attain or obtain heaven. Uh, so this is sounds just like some other religion that is not Christianity, that it is a mockery. And if you can see them, you will. It is a mockery, and especially if you were able to watch what I just showed from their Easter "quote unquote" celebration or whatever they were doing, you would see that this is a mockery, and and this is what is now being shoved down the throats of America's pastime, being baseball. Now, people in the stands that bring their children. Hopefully, a lot of I pray. I'm going to pray that the the stands are empty on June the 16th that they lose ticket sales and that they would rethink having these type of events. I don't know. Our world, our culture is, is as the old Baptist pastors used to say, going to hell in a handbasket. So I'm not sure if, if that's going to happen or not, but um, we'll see. Let's, let's just finish, finish out this um, interview or this uh, news thing really quickly. GQ Center calling the Dodgers' latest decision a step in the right direction, while the sisters themselves say the ongoing controversy brings out a special message they want you to think about. If we can look this way on the streets of Los Angeles, there is room for everyone to be who they are as they are. Now live, another part of this ongoing tragedy deals with the mayor of Anaheim. When the Dodgers first pulled back that invitation, the mayor in Anaheim offered to have the sisters as her personal guest down with the Angels for their Pride Night next month. And Sister Unity stopping short of confirming that they'll go down to Anaheim. But she tells me, uh, the sister, that, well, they're thinking about it. And they, she said, well, you know what? We're just going to be eating a lot of hot dogs and celebrating a lot with a lot of baseball games next month. So we'll see as this controversy seems far from over. For now, we're live here outside the stadium. Back to both of you we go. And there you have it, folks. Outside the stadium, Anaheim Angels are going to likely offer them a, a chance to come down and do the same thing at their field. Whatever they need to do, whatever kind of thing they're going to do, they're apparently going to be going to a lot of baseball games in the month of June and eating a lot of hot dogs. So uh, this is just another another step in the indoctrination of families, of children, of moving us further and further away from the gospel. So in light of these things, these are these are big things. And I get that, that most of us watching or listening are really not affected. Many of us are not in Los Angeles. Many of us are not even close to Los Angeles and we're not going to be going to the game. And if we were there, we wouldn't go to it anyway. And most of us are not drinking Bud Light. And that whole controversy doesn't affect us a whole lot either. And most of us are not going to be wearing Satan respects pronoun shirts. So that controversy doesn't really affect us either. However, what happens is you see these on a mainstream scale, but these type things are happening everywhere, even down to your, your, your most country little place in America where you would think it's Mayberry. There is going to be a, a fissure of this type of thing and thinking happening somewhere. Maybe you don't see it yet. Maybe you don't understand it yet, but it is happening. And it, it, that kind of type of thinking and that type of indoctrination is starting to try to spread. And we must do all that we can to stop it before it becomes, well, I would say, seeing as you got some men dressed as women who claim to be nuns dancing provocatively on a cross, and they're going to be at a baseball game. I feel like this train is already rolling with a head full of steam. But can it be stopped? By God's grace, it can. But I think it's also going to be from men and women just like you and I who care about the things of God and who care about the way things are going. And that leads me to what are we going to do? What can we do? We can stand up for what we believe in. We can stand firm in our faith. We can call a spade a spade. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's sin, it's sin. And we can't be worried about what other people are going to say to us or about us, or if we lose Facebook followers or Instagram followers, or if we lose real friends over this. But we must stand firm with what the Bible says, because here's the truth. If we were to read Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, you can see that we are living in this type of world right now. 
Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Those who call evil good. That is what we're seeing. They're calling this LGBTQIA stuff good, but it's actually evil. And they're promoting it all over the place. So what do we do? Well, we stand up. We stick to it. We do what this man does. This is a, a Los Angeles Dodgers baseball player. Blake, and I'm going to say this last name wrong, Blake Trinian, Trinian, something like that. Um, he is a pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, and I hope you're able to see this if you're watching. I think you can. He says, and I quote, I am disappointed, and this has gone out, this is known. I'm disappointed to see the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence being honored as heroes at Dodger Stadium. Many of their performances are blasphemous, and their work only displays hate and mockery of Catholics and the Christian faith. I understand that playing baseball is a privilege and not a right. My convictions in Jesus Christ will also always come first. Since I've been with the Dodgers, they have been at the forefront of supporting a wide variety of groups. However, inviting the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence to perform disenfranchises a large community and promotes hate of Christians and people of faith. This single event alienates the fans and supporters of the Dodgers, Major League Baseball, and professional sports. People like baseball for its entertainment value and competition. The fans do not want propaganda or politics forced on them. The debacle with Bud Light and Target should be a warning to companies and professional sports to stay true to their brand and leave the propaganda and politics off the field. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe the word of God is true. And in Galatians 6, 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. This group openly mocks Jesus Christ, the cornerstone of my faith, and I want to make it clear that I do not agree with nor support the decision of the Dodgers to quote unquote honor the sisters of perpetual indulgence. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. This is again signed by Blake Treninen. And that is a player on the Dodgers organization. It has since been said that Clayton Kershaw, another Dodgers player, has come out and he is not in support of this either. So we can stand up as Christians for what we believe in. We can promote these things, promote what we believe in, not the things that Target, Bud Light, and the Dodgers are promoting, but we promote what we believe in. And what a beautiful time to continue. And if you aren't, to start proclaiming the gospel. The gospel is the power to save. We're not going to save people by boycotting or we can't save people anyway. Let me back up. We are not going to see people saved by boycotting organizations. Now, if you want to boycott Target, boycott Major League Baseball, boycott sports teams, that is your right, your prerogative. You do as you do. But nobody is going to be saved without the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So remember, I told you that these three things are kind of on a major scale, and you're, these are not really affecting us as much as we might think they are. But it, it, it all go, it all funnels down into the smallest of towns. It's in your town. So what can you do? Preach the gospel. Be bold. Be bold in proclaiming the truth. The whole counsel of God. Stop letting the corporate America and the culture of the day run all things. We must step up and be louder than the culture. I've said this numerous times on this podcast is the church has tried to become part of the culture has tried to be relevant with the culture instead of standing true to the word of God and the gospel and reaching the culture with the gospel, with the truth, not becoming like the culture, but reaching the culture with the gospel truth. And when we had, when we started changing the way we do church based on the culture around the church, I think the church took a big L. Now, 
I say that in terms of human looking and human reasoning. We know that the church, the, the, the universal church, the true church of Christ, not the denomination church of Christ, but those who are truly Christian churches, they don't take losses. They take wins. Christ is building his church. But I think you know what I mean. When we started looking like the culture, that was a big, a big, uh, big shot to the church itself. So we need to be churches that are less concerned about looking like the culture and more concerned about changing it with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what can we do? Preach the gospel, stand firm in our faith, be willing to lose friends or even family members over our belief. The scriptures are, are in, in, in a few places, talk about um, hating your mother and father, losing your sister or your brother, right? It, it means that you are not going to put your family or your friends above your beliefs, your, above the scriptures, above the things of God. So be willing to lose friends and family over this because those friends and family are not as important as your relationship with Christ, and it never will be. So, uh, preach the gospel, be firm, stand boldly in your faith, be prepared to lose friends and family members over this, and give God glory in all things. Whatever that looks like in your life, make sure you're giving God glory in everything. And stop laying down and just letting pride month happen, pride everything happen, do it lovingly, but boldly preach the truth and pray that we see souls converted, that we would see people saved by grace through faith. This month is going to be challenging, as I'm afraid it's we're only a few hours into June the 1st, and I'm afraid this month it's going to be laid on thick because it just seems to get worse and worse and worse, and we're going to see how this plays out. June the 16th is the day that the perpetual indulgence ladies, uh, whatever their names are, are going to be at the ball field at the Dodger Stadium. So we'll see how that plays out. We'll see how Target plays out. We'll see how Bud Light continues to fare. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to continue to see how your town fares, how your school systems fare. What's going to happen? Are you, believer, going to lay down and let it happen? Or are you going to boldly preach the gospel no matter what? no matter what it costs. The Bible tells us that we must count the cost of following Christ. This is a time where every believer must count the cost. What's it going to cost you to boldly stand on your faith? Count that cost and be willing to risk it all for the sake of Christ and the glory of God. So while you're thinking every time you see a rainbow logo or hear anything from the LGBTQ side, whether it be a commercial, um, a Facebook ad, whether it be Facebook or YouTube or anything, putting their rainbow logo up there. Every time you see it, I pray that you would ask yourself, am I doing my part in preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ? And if not, I pray that that would push you to do so. So uh, have a month. Let's, let's change it for the glory of God. Let's preach the gospel and give God glory in all that we do. God bless.